Hi, I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. So with The Expanse Season 4 right around the corner coming out on Amazon Prime, I figured now would be a good time to give a little introduction to The Expanse for people who haven't seen it yet. Before I go forward, um, I would like to say really, really good series, and if you really want to go in blind, which is the way I went into it, I highly recommend just going in and watching it. But if you really want a little bit of a synopsis and a little bit of a... a a little bit of background on the world, I'll give that to you in this video. So The Expanse, the TV show, is based off of a book series by James Corey, and it depicts humanity in uh, 2350-ish, a couple hundred years. Um, I think the most fascinating thing about The Expanse for me is it's very grounded in reality. So its ship designs, its orbital mechanics all fit within the bounds of science for the most part. Um, so The Expanse tells the story of the solar system, a few hundred years in the future. Uh, humanity hasn't invented faster than light travel yet, but we have colonized the solar system. There's people living from Earth all the way out into the moons of Saturn and Jupiter. And there's two major organized governments in the system. The UN, which has control over Earth and the Martian Congressional Republic, which has control over Mars. There is a third faction, the Belters, or the OPA, the Outer Planets Alliance, who are a group of pirates and freight haulers who want to be treated as equals to the inner planets. They want a nation in the belt that is comparable to Mars or Earth. And all of these political factions have their own advantages and disadvantages. For example, Earth has a manpower advantage. Uh, they have the largest population in the solar system. Mars, on the other hand, has a technological advantage. While they don't have as many ships or people as Earth, their ships tend to be better one-on-one -on -one than Earth's vessels. The OPA is very resourceful. They are good at taking what they have, which is relatively small compared to Earth and Mars, and, and making it work. Where the first episode picks up, uh, you're following two plot lines, pretty much. You have the crew of an ice hauler, like a big tanker ship called the Canterbury, and the story of a police officer on one of the dwarf planets called Ceres in the asteroid belt. These two stories end up intertwining and becoming part of the same system-spanning conspiracy that threatens to plunge Earth and Mars into a state of war. Um, overall, the show mixes in a lot of elements of other things. There's some crime drama in there. There's obviously a lot of very hard sci-fi, and the technology is fascinating. On top of that, especially in Season 2, it leans into almost a Cold War-esque political environment between Earth and Mars, with them sort of constantly ready to attack the other. Um, we get things that kind of resemble cabinet meetings during the Cuban Missile Crisis and stuff like that. So if that kind of political drama is fascinating, there's some of that in there too. And it tells all this with a very relatable, uh, fun-to-watch cast of characters. All in all, it's one of the best new sci-fi properties in the past ten years. A couple other things I'm just going to throw out there kind of randomly that I really like about the show, and it really lends to its hard sci-fi, grounded-in-reality feel to it. Um is, uh, like I said, there's no faster-than-light travel, but there's also no artificial gravity. Um, magic gravity, if you will. No gravity plating or gravity generators. Instead, it's all uh, Newtonian. So, like, spin gravity, like we see in 2001, A Space Odyssey, um, or angular gravity, where the ship is constantly accelerating in at 1G uh, to simulate gravity on board. The other thing that I think is fascinating is the the way space combat is handled. It's not like what we see in Star Wars where it's almost like uh, Age of Sail cannon battles where they're kind of pull up alongside each other and trade shots. It's all BVR for the most part. It's all beyond visual range. So things like torpedoes that strike at thousands of kilometers and railguns and a lot of the combat, you can't see the other ship. It's exchanges over vast distances, which is most likely the way space combat would occur in reality. I would like to stress that there is no shortage of close-up engagements between ships, but in general, it's depicted as the standard for space combat is uh, firing torpedoes over immense distances. All in all, I really recommend the show. If you haven't seen it, 
seriously go check it out. Definitely worth your time. So if you enjoyed what you saw here today or you just want more sci-fi discussions, head down below, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you can get notified when I upload new videos. And also, don't forget to leave a like and a comment. Tell me what you think of The Expanse. Have you seen it before? Uh, is it a little too realistic for you? Or does it, does it kind of scratch that itch for something really grounded in realism? So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time. <laughs>